Well, we've enjoyed it here so much over the last fortnight. It's been absolutely blissful. 27, 28 degrees, 29 today, and this is February. Unbelievable. We've got a 10-hour flight coming up uh, tomorrow, but we thought it would be nice for you just to see how lovely the Ocean Maya Morale is and what we enjoyed about it. Our holiday took off to a flying start with Tui's very relaxing Dreamliner. Everything was taken care of. From pickup coach at Cancun Airport to our adults only Ocean Maya Hotel. And golf buggy delivery of our suitcases and of course ourselves direct to our very own apartment complex. If you want to escape the winter blues, then this is a great welcome from Mexico. Well, here we are. This is the room that we have got, which we really loved. Uh, the view is fantastic out of the window, directly into the jungle area with all the palm trees, all the animals, wandering around beautiful little baby deer that come near your patio. Fabulous big bed which we really enjoyed, lovely uh, quality bed. And also you've got your air con on all the time. Now, if you're not used to having air con on all the time, probably a good idea to bring some earplugs if you are noise sensitive, because I did find uh, putting earplugs in helped with the noise of the air con. Um, fabulous big shower in here. Uh, you can get two people in it, which is uh, great. Everything that you need is in the room already. You've got your little fridge over here, uh, which is every day they fill it up with more drinks. And today we have water, beer, and milk, and we've got uh, some soft drinks as well. We've got a little patio here with a swing seat and a table and chairs. You can sit out there and have uh, a drink at sunset. Uh, you can watch the animals wander around. Beautiful little baby deer that come near your patio. All sorts of little animals. Brilliant if you love your wildlife. Really lovely place to be. And this is the quieter pool where you can just rest on the lounges, take a nice break from the cares and worries of home and a little bit further from the entertainment pool. So you get a bit of quiet. Read your book. Sometime. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> After settling into our new home in the sunshine, we set out to investigate what the hotel had to offer. There are 33 blocks with eight apartments in each surrounded by extremely well-kept gardens. One of the reasons for the holiday was to explore the Mayan history and enjoy its photo opportunities. Altogether, we booked three excursions. Our first trip was to see some local Mayan sites, culture and, of course, history. Here in the old city of Coba, we were able to see how the traditional Mexicans lived. This is a typical home with an earth floor, homemade furniture with the basic minimum amenities, and an effective air conditioning system with the use of see-through stick walls. Every family would keep chickens. Cooking was done outside on a simple fire made from dried sticks. Across the road, we were shown how to make simple Mexican peasant food. Anchiladas date back to Mayan times, when peasants in the Valley of Mexico would eat corn tortillas wrapped around small fish. These days, both corn and flour tortillas are used and are filled with meat, cheese, seafood, beans, or vegetables. But here we are shown how simple it is to flatten out the corn dough and cook them for a few minutes on a metal skillet. The wood smoke adding to the delicious flavor. Afterwards, it was a short journey to one of the many local cenotes. Cenote is a Mexican for water hole, a naturally occurring pool of crystal clear water. These are created over many thousands of years of erosion of the soft limestone rock. They are filled with natural spring water and small fish, not to mention tourists. I found the water to be a little cold, but very refreshing once I got used to it. 
I do recommend you take a towel and a change of clothing. All our trips headed south along Highway 307. Tulum was about an hour away and Coba an hour and a half. We returned back around 4 p.m., plenty of time to catch some more rays by the pool and listen to the mariachi band that serenades you as you swim. Every Wednesday, the Ocean Maya Royale Hotel organize a very unusual pool party in the smaller activity pool. All the Mexican people here are very friendly. Even the pelicans want to see what's going on in the pool. And as you can hear, this is the entertainment pool, a little bit louder than the other pool where you can do some serious swimming. This one is all about fun, has the foam party, has all this going on right now, as you can hear and see for yourself. The weather here is pretty hot in February and it gets warmer. It's a wonderful winter break away from the freezing conditions back home in the UK. Fortunately, the wind kept us from getting too hot and bothered as the humidity is pretty high at 90%, February being the driest month of the year, which is why we chose to go in February. Unfortunately, the wind also brings sargassum, better known as seaweed or seagrass. It's a naturally occurring event that happens when the weather gets hot and sargassum multiplies. When the seaweed does invade, the hotels fight back to keep the beaches pristine for their guests. But it does seem like a thankless task to me. Well, it's a little windy at the moment, as you can probably tell, but still gloriously warm, 29 degrees at the moment. The first place we went to, restaurant-wise, was this one just behind us here called the Dolce Vita. What we loved about it was we were able to sit over the water as we were having our meal. Absolutely divine. If you like a bit of El Fresco dining, you can actually sit outside as well. We preferred to be indoors and still have that wonderful uh, experience. It was good food as well. It's 7.15 and sunrise over the Caribbean Sea. Our second trip out means getting up early to beat the rush of tourists to one of Mexico's Mayan hotspots, Tulum. The ancient city is built right on the coastal shores of the Caribbean Sea. After being dropped off at the coach park, it's another short walk through the jungle. Tulum is also the Mayan word for fence or wall. When you find the wall, the entrance to the city is through this eight meter tunnel. Tulum has architecture typical of Mayan sites on the east coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. Every corner is a photo opportunity, so do remember to bring along your camera. There are three major structures of interest at the site. The Temple of the Frescoes, used as an observatory for tracking the movements of the sun. Also home to iguanas. And the Temple of the Descending God. El Castillo, a small shrine used as a beacon for incoming canoes. It's a photographer's paradise. We were glad we came early as I would imagine the small but beautiful beach would get pretty crowded. Another picture postcard is the Temple of the God of Wind. This is Turtle Beach where the babies hatch out from their sandy incubator and head down here to the sea and beyond. Turtle season starts in May and finishes up around late November.
I do recommend a visit to the ruins of Tulum, but do come early to avoid the crowds. And these are the crowds we missed. It's Sunday and the local population have come here for a day out. All this walking makes me hungry. Well, the dining experience is great. You've got five restaurants to choose from. You have Dolce Vita, which is over on the, uh, the pier. Uh, just here you have the Japanese restaurant, which is definitely an experience. You, you've got to enjoy that one. The chefs are extraordinary. If you move over here, you can actually see we have the entertainment area. Uh, all this is lit up at night. Very beautiful, very romantic. And then as we move over here, you can see this is where we have our breakfast in the morning at the La Hacienda, which is an array of food that you can have anything possible is just about there. Uh, we also have our evening meals there sometimes, if that is what you choose. And then further over from the La Hacienda is the Blue Moon, and that's where we're going to go tonight for a romantic meal, because it's coming to the end of our holiday. Well, everyone's coming out for their dinner now. I thought I'd just pop up here and show you a little bit of what's going on up here. It's just a nice little place to come up and have a photograph taken, especially at night when they light it all up. The waterfall is a wonderful effect. In the daytime, you'll see iguanas sitting on all of the rocks, which is another photo opportunity. And it's just a little bit of fresh air at the end of a long, hot day lounging. Fantastic, love it. And of course, we must mention our Mexican restaurant. That would be silly to come to Mexico and not have Mexican food. And this is a superb one. The lovely thing about this restaurant is it caters for all tastes, whether you like it spicy or not quite so spicy. You can have your burritos, your soups, your tacos, your tortillas, everything. It's beautiful because you're eating in the round. You've got these fabulous, colorful tablecloths and really fabulous people serving you as well. And the lovely thing is that you also can come here for your lunch and then go out and have a dip afterwards. It's perfect. Our final trip out was to head south again down Highway 307 to the pyramids at the archaeological zone of Koba. We chose the Mayan city of Koba over Chichen Itza simply because it's less crowded and closer. Although the archaeological site of Koba received three quarters of a million visitors last year. The ancient Mayans built two types of pyramids, those that were meant to be climbed and those that were not. The first type was used for holding sacrificial rituals. Koba was estimated to have had some 50,000 inhabitants at its peak of civilization. This is a court designed for a Mayan game played with a rubber ball and hit from the hip, almost like vertical basketball. Here they have one of the few remaining pyramids you can actually climb. It's called No Hutch Mole, the area's highest pyramid. There is only one way up. A rope handrail is provided for the faint of heart. It's 120 giant steps that take you 138 feet high for a spectacular view over the jungle and the Yucatan Peninsula. <laughs> And once at the top, the only option is down before it gets too crowded. I found a few muscles I hadn't used for a while. There are several ways to descend, some more refined than others. I found it was much easier going up than down. Quite a good workout. Once on the ground, it's back to the coach on foot through the jungle. If it's all too much for you, there are plenty of cycle taxis. Now there are lots of animals here that you can see because we're surrounded by a jungle which is fantastic. Uh, what I've seen is we've had the deer that actually has been 
outside the patio door, which is just brilliant. Little tiny deer, gorgeous little deer. Not too timid either, which is wonderful. Don't know how to say this name, Coati maybe? But there's lots of them, they're fabulous. And they will never harm you, they just run around with their big long striped tails. Uh, this character, I couldn't even tell you how you say this name, maybe Surek, um, but he's a funny little character. He looks a little bit like, about that big, uh, dark brown, short hair, and when he sees you, he thinks that if he freezes, you won't see him. Just check him out as well. I've seen him, so I've got this one, this one, this one, and the raccoon. We've seen the raccoons. Lots of iguanas, plenty of iguanas. This character, very noisy, loves to chat. Uh, squirrels, of course. Haven't seen the red crabs, haven't seen the turtles, uh, or the blue crabs, which I'm probably relieved about, to be honest. <laughs> But there are, and the macaw, I did not see either. But there are lots of wonderful animals in the area that just wander around freely, which is beautiful, but do not feed them. If excursions aren't for you, there's a lot to do at the hotel. Plenty of opportunity to relax and enjoy an all-inclusive drink and people watch. If you're one of the more energetic types, do take the free option of kayaking. It's also a great place for windsurfing or paragliding. Turning south, there are miles of beautiful white sand and surf for you to enjoy. Turning north, there's a short beach walk past several hotels. The sand here is divine and it doesn't get too hot underfoot. The beautiful shoreline takes you to a freshwater lagoon with crystal clear water. Be careful as the current is deceptively strong. Because the water is traveled from deep within the mangroves, it brings with it a brown peat-like substance. This is naturally deposited on the beach just south of the inlet. After all the exercise, it's good to relax and watch some live evening entertainment. Every night we've seen lots of Mexican talent, from mariachi bands to a Beatles tribute band. There's also dancing and all-inclusive whining and dining to enjoy. And home again. Well, here we are, we've had our fortnight or two weeks, depending on what part of the world you're coming from, our vacation or our holiday, and it has been absolutely fantastic. We have had the best food, the best wine, a very, very good time all together. If you enjoy sea and sun and sand and lovely people, fabulous food and wonderful staff, this is a great place to come. My favorite restaurant was the Dolce Vita on the waterfront, absolutely gorgeous. But alas, our time has come and we need to go. I hope this tan lasts a little bit because we're going back to four degrees and it's 26 here at the moment. Salavi.
Margarita Morena. Para pan iré a buscar.